All right, I wanted to go over some of the VEX pieces that you are going to be possibly looking at when you're working on the spinning sign. Many of you started this yesterday and you got off to a really good start. You located some of your basic pieces. However, the real challenge here is uh, this is kind of your own creation. I'm not giving you a lot of pictures to look off of. Uh, you can do some research on the internet if you go VEX spinning sign or PLTW spinning sign. That may give you uh, some ideas. The objective is to create kind of a mock-up of a spinning sign that's going to attract customers to a business. And in doing this, uh, you have to use a motor to make the sign spin. It has to be somewhat presentable where it's easy to see. You need to watch your motor speeds so that it's not going too fast. And you need to use at least one push button to turn it off and maybe a second push button uh, to turn it on, depending on how it's set up. Uh, in the instructions that I gave you on that sheet that many of you still have, it says uh, for a bonus to add a second push button. So I have some basic parts here that we can talk about so that you can identify those. Uh, let's start with our base plate. Uh, the base plate is what you used on the mechanisms. So it's kind of your starting point. It's kind of your foundation for setting this up. So I'll flip this over here. Uh, it's a good idea. To make sure you have your names on those. We're going to keep these in the cabinet in the back of the room. Other things that you may need, uh, various metal hardware pieces to uh, not only hold the motor but kind of position things in place. We have the motor here as well. The VEX Cortex that our motors and switches go into. And I have a couple of digital switches. Now, starting with the motor, if you're opening up a new motor and you want to place it up on the girder, uh, it's going to take the gold screws. They're either in the toolbox or in the package that comes with the motors if you're opening up for the first time. Now, what you may want to consider is how you want to place the motor. Chances are you're going to use a long drive shaft for your pole for your spinning sign. You're going to need some collars to keep that drive shaft in place. And as you're placing the girder on your base plate, you're going to need some machine screws with some of the fasteners that have the star washers on it. Don't forget your Allen wrenches of different sizes. Now I have kind of an example that I started, so I'll set these out of the way. Over here, I've made a metal bracket that's going to support my motor in the upright position. Uh, I've started to put some fasteners on. I haven't quite finished that. I got one over here that's kind of on crooked, so I'll get that tightened up real quick so we have a good idea of what we're working with. I was having some troubles yesterday getting that threaded on, so maybe it's a problem with the fastener. Sometimes the threads get a little scored at the end. There, I got that one started okay. Then I want to make sure I'm using my Allen wrench to tighten it up. Remember, there's two different sizes. Make sure you're using the right size. The short, fat ones for the machine screws and the long, skinny one is for, uh, works well on the gold screws and it works well on the collars. So with this setup in this fashion, I can fix this to my base. So I'll get this started, but I won't take it too far. I think I'll just put one screw in now, for now, for illustration purposes, but I can go back and make it a little bit better here in a bit. Just so you have a good idea of how to start this. Now this is just one idea. Like I said, it's your own creation, so you can use many other ideas. Anything that you can possibly come up with, I will keep it somewhat simple. The cortex, you're going to want to make sure that that's bolted down to your base plate. On your motors, you only need a single motor on this, so you want to make sure that 
you put this in motor port 1 or 10. Black wire should face out. It doesn't matter which motor port you use, but you will have to go into motors and sensor setup on robot C and tell the program where you put that motor. I have a couple of digital switches here. I have a push button, if I can get it untangled from my mess over here. This is the one we're most familiar with. And I also have a trigger switch. Now, as we're going through the materials, the push button's the most popular, so we may run out of those. Uh, you're, you can use a trigger switch. It will serve the same purpose. So I'm going to take my push button. I'm going to put it over here in digital port 1. Black wire faces out. Be careful with those pins. Very fragile. And I'm going to take my trigger switch. I'm going to put it over here in digital port 2. And then I'll have to name those in motors and sensor setup as well. Get these bolted down. Now, all I really need to do at this point is once I have these bolted down, uh, I need to come up with some sort of sign for my pole here. It has to be a spinning sign. I can print something off on the computer, or I can uh, draw up something and tape it on there, or I could even take a, a piece of VEX, and I can, let's see if I can get it up there on my pole, using the right fasteners. This can be my my spinning billboard up here. If I get those, uh, they look like bearings, but they have a square hole in the metal. Uh, that would hold that in place nice. So once this is all bolted down and the sign's done, I'm ready to program it. So I'll need a battery, which I don't have one right with me. I'll need my orange cord. I'll go into robot C. I'll go to, I'll set up my motors and sensors. And I'll set up my platform, and I'll set up my communication to USB only. I'll write my program for this, and then I'll get things marked off on my sheet. And then I should be good to go. So hopefully you get to this point today. And until next time, good luck.